Thank you. Chancellor, Dr. Trevor Manuel, members of council, Vice Chancellor, Dr. Prince Nevuchalu, and members of the executive management of CPUT, deans of faculties, academic and administrative staff of CPUT. I'm a bit smaller. Thank you. Distinguished guests, Family and friends of the graduates, graduates, good evening to all. Bonsoir, Khoyanand, Assalamu alaikum. I'm not going to compete with the <laughs> Chancellor. <laughs> Let me start by saying how honored I am to have been invited as a guest speaker tonight. Honored, yes, but also humbled and quite frankly a bit scared. In France, this, these impressive graduation ceremonies with these uh, colorful robes and strange headgear were actually eliminated during our May 1968 student revolution, which had actually some points in common with the Roads Must Go campaign, I think. So I belong to the post-68 generation and I received my diploma via the good old French post office service. I've been told that graduation ceremonies have made a comeback in France and they are now called à l'américaine, American style. But why not à la sud-africaine? Since I represent France in South Africa and since I don't know much about engineering, I feel compelled to talk to you about France. But rather than talking about the relationship between our two countries, South Africa and France, starting from the Huguenots, by the way, did you know that Jan van Riebeck, the guy with whom South Africa's problems started, as you were told recently, well, Jan van Riebeck's wife was French, Marie, née de la Cairie. But I've chosen not to talk about that. I've chosen to talk to you about some aspects of the relationship between France and Africa. France has a special relationship with Africa. This relationship is linked to history, and history which has often been tragic. This relationship is above all based on the human ties forged from generation to generation with French nationals living in Africa and Africans who have come to live in France. Africa features high on the scale of priorities for French policymakers. Africa is a very close neighbor. You know that only 14 kilometers, the Gibraltar Strait, separate Europe from Africa. The way Africa copes with today's challenges like climate change, population growth, instability, extremist violence, etc., has a direct impact on France and on the European countries and on their policies in the fields of migration, trade, security, development assistance, etc. This impact is reinforced by the closeness of human, cultural and economic relationships particularly as far as Francophone Africa is concerned. Because of this proximity, a proximity that is simultaneously geographic, sentimental, cultural, linguistic and economic, French political leaders often say that France bears a particular responsibility in Africa. Past and present French presidents Nicolas Sarkozy and François Hollande have clearly stated their intention to put an end to the traditional web 
of unhealthy, corrupt political and business connections dubbed France Afrique. There is a clear will to normalize the relationship with Africa. But Africa remains a continent that France cannot push to the margins of its diplomatic action, whether it be political or economic. The reality is also that Africa is the continent, if you compare to the Middle East, for instance, where France can still wield an influence that it can hardly command anywhere else in the world. In time of crisis, France is still seen as a key source of diplomatic, military or financial pressure on or support for the countries in the region. It's not really a position of great power, but it's more a position of relevance. I've chosen two examples to illustrate this special relationship, the human links between France and Africa and the economic relations. Around 246,000 French nationals live in Africa, taking into account only those registered, which is quite restrictive. This is much more than the number of French living in the Middle East, for instance, or in Asia. They are found mainly in the Maghreb and in sub-Saharan Francophone Africa. 19,000 live in sub-Saharan non-Francophone countries. And the largest French community in sub-Saharan Anglophone Africa lives right here in South Africa with around 7,600 7, French citizens registered in our consulates, which is more than in Angola or Nigeria. On the other side, in 2013, the immigrant population living in France was estimated at 5.8 million people. Uh, just to remind you, the total population of France is 65 million. Out of these 5.8 million people, 43% came from Africa, out of which 30% came from Maghreb and 13% from Sub-Saharan Africa. France welcomes nearly 300,000 foreign students, nearly half of whom come from Africa, which puts France at number three after the US and UK as a destination for foreign students. And France ranks first in the world as far as the student population from Africa is concerned. Morocco is sending the largest contingent overall, but also Senegal, Cameroon, Gabon, Guinea, Ivory Coast, Madagascar, etc. They are also sending their political economic elite of tomorrow to study in France. South Africa, as you certainly know, is number two as a destination for African students. But South Africa sends relatively few students abroad, around 6,400 only, to be compared with uh, 240,000 sent abroad by South Korea, a country which has a global population which is roughly equal to South Africa. Very few South African students study in France at the moment, around 120, which is less than the estimated number of French students in South Africa. They are about 200. So there is certainly a margin for improvement there. Another important category of people-to-people -people relationship is found at the local entities level, municipalities, provinces, regions, there are more than 400 registered partnerships between French and African local entities. You find them, of course, mainly in Madagascar and West Africa. In Mali, for instance, you've got 170 French local entities which are engaged in local partnerships. But you also find some strong local partnerships in uh, Ethiopia, for instance. And what about South Africa? Well, I'm happy to say that there are some here as well, even if there are few. Bourgogne, Burgundy, with the Western Cape, Ile-de-France, which is Paris, the region of Paris, with Gauteng, La Réunion, this little piece of France in the Indian Ocean, with Durban and KZN, 
and Nantes as well. These local partnerships are a good channel for eye-opening exchanges between youth of both countries, schools or professional colleges. And I'm thinking of uh, Ilsenburg nearby and, uh, or Seder in KZN, uh, the agricultural uh, colleges. And what about the French economic presence in Africa? There are an estimated 62,000 French enterprises of all sizes in Africa. In South Africa, we count about 300, with most of the big ones listed in the Paris Stock Exchange. They are present here. French companies are traditionally very strong in sectors like logistics, shipping, port and rail operations, telecoms, banking, air transport, agro-industries. With the growing presence of emerging powers in Africa, there is clearly an erosion of French positions in the construction sector, for instance, where China is competing with lower prices, as well as uh, vehicles, telecoms. All in all, the total value of imports, exports between France and Africa has increased significantly since the 60s. But France, France's uh, relative position has declined. To give you an idea, between 2000 and 2011, France's market share south of the Sahara has declined from about 10% to 4.7%, while at the same time, at the, over the same period, the value of French exports to this area has doubled. In the early 90s, France's strategic and economic interest in Africa was even seen as declining. But the arrival of new actors, China, Brazil, Turkey in particular, came to show uh, to the French business sector that the continent could still be a profitable market. And we have now seen the rise of Afro-optimism in France, with Africa being seen with a completely fresh look and considered as a new frontier market, a continent of business opportunities with impressive growth rates and a growing middle class. Because the competition is harsh, the accent is put by French business active in Africa on social and environmental standards where they can fare well compared to the main competitor, China, for instance. But this competition doesn't prevent partnerships where Chinese companies provide hardware, infrastructure, and the French provide the software, the advanced technology. For instance, there is a Franco-Chinese strategic partnership in the nuclear energy sector, which could be brought, why not, to South Africa. France started many years ago a tradition of summits where all the African countries are invited now the Americans and the Chinese and uh, Turkey, I think, are starting to do the same. At the last Africa-France summit in December 2013, President Hollande acknowledged that the time of Africa has come. A roadmap for a new partnership has been drawn to double the exchanges between France and Africa over the next five years. Today, those exchanges stand roughly at uh, 30 billion euros uh, exports and 30 billion euros imports. This partnership is based on three principles, co-localization, investment going to Africa must have an impact in France, and a call is made for African investments into France. Transparency in aid mechanisms with a pilot case with French ODA, uh, official development aid to Mali, extended to other major recipients of French ODA. You can follow on a website where the, the money is going to. Long-term commitment. The idea is not to expect quick return on investment. What France has to offer is the renowned qu high quality of its companies, in particular in the energy sector, including renewable energy. In the area of sustainable cities, energy efficient buildings and modes of collective transport in the agro-business and in the new technologies and innovation sector. Green economy and the fight against climate change are subjects of particular attention today in France as we prepare to host in Paris the COP21, 
the UN Conference on Climate Change at the end of this year. Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, I cannot conclude without touching briefly on the question of linguistic divide between Francophone and Anglophone Africa. Yes, it is an heritage of Africa's sad colonial history, and as Alpha Umar Konare, the then chair of the African Union Commission, used to say, Kiswahili should be the official language of Africa. But it is not, or it is not yet. And French today is as much an African language as English. Which is why, for South African students, keen to find employment in an increasingly open and globalized Africa, to learn French is a smart move. French is cool. And it will give them an edge at a time when South Africa business is expanding outside of Southern Africa into Francophone Africa. In conclusion, I must echo what the Vice Chancellor said a moment ago about the strong and fruitful relationship which exists between CPUT and France. One of the most visible and exciting products of this cooperation through FSATI, the French South African Institute of Technology, based here in the Belleville campus, has been the first South African CubeSat, CEPISO, launched in November 2013. And it's still going well, which apparently is very rare for a satellite this age. Another aspect of this collaboration is the PLMCC, the Product Life, Life Cycle Management Competency Center, the training center also based in CPUT, also here in Belleville, financed by French company Dassault System and the French Ministry of Education, which has trained over 200 students and professionals on 3D modeling software. And the most recent exciting addition, which the Vice Chancellor mentioned, is the partnership agreement signed last January between CPUT and the French culinary school Ferrandi, which is based in Paris. And there will be uh, very soon, uh, I think in two days' time, a new addition, an MOU is going to be signed um, between CPUT and the French Embassy to develop the teaching of French in all faculties. As you can see, not even the sky is the limit to our growing cooperation. So once again, thank you very much for inviting me and listening to me. Thank you.